quasi here. Thousands of years ago, hidden deep in the Himalayas, there existed a brotherhood of mystics, the ancient yogis who uncovered powers within the human body and mind that defied all belief. Now, these weren't just spiritual seekers. They were masters of reality itself, guardians of knowledge so potent that it was passed down in whispers from one enlightened master to a chosen disciple. And at the heart of their most sacred teachings was one main secret, the breath. For these yogis, the breath wasn't just air. It was the key to controlling prana, the cosmic life force that flows through all living beings. They believed that every breath we take is an opportunity to harness this energy, shaping our inner world and by extension, the outer world. Now, these are legends of yogis who mastered this energy so completely that they could slow down their heartbeats to the point of being buried alive for days. They could walk through fire unscathed or even live for centuries by stopping the aging process or by controlling prana through the breath. Their entire system of belief revolved around mastering the breath to control the subtle energy channels in the body known as the nadis. These nadis were believed to be 72,000 invisible rivers of energy flowing through the body like electric currents. The yogis taught that most people live their lives with these channels blocked, leaving them disconnected from their true power. But through specific breathing techniques called pranayama, these channels could be opened, allowing kundalini, the dormant spiritual energy coiled at the base of the spine, to rise. And then came the real mastery, the unlocking of siddhis, superhuman abilities detailed in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Yogis who perfected their breath could unlock these powers. Anima, the ability to shrink their bodies to the size of an atom. Mahima, the power to expand to vast proportions. Or Lahima, to become lighter than air, even levitating at will. These powers weren't just metaphors. They were described as real outcomes of mastering the breath and accessing samadhi, a void-like state of pure consciousness where the mind and body dissolve and the yogi becomes one with the infinite. Imagine this, entering a state where time stops, the mind falls silent and you merge with the universe itself. In this state, the yogis believed even Ishvara, the divine cosmic consciousness, reveals itself. The breath was their tool to unlock this profound state, a bridge between the material and the spiritual worlds. In today's video, I'm going to share with you one of these ancient pranayama techniques, a technique designed to open the pathways of your energy to enter the void state where the deepest revelations occur. Now, this is more than just a breathing exercise. This is the same method the ancient yogis use to touch the infinite. If you practice this for just 20 minutes every single morning, within 40 days, you're going to notice how your reality has completely shifted. So with that, let's get started. So before we get to this five-step protocol that is going to allow you to unlock more energy and just basically step back from living and enter this void state, we have to understand the four main components to breathing, beginning with the very first and most important component. So this component to slowing your breath down, what's important is it must happen naturally and in a non-forceful way. So around minute, eight to 12 of your meditation, which is what we're gonna do, you will notice that your breathing will naturally become slower. It'll become more deliberate. You're going to feel every single contraction and expansion of your lungs. But the key part is to not forcefully slow breathing down because if you do, then you're just going to be manipulating this just like any other thing in life. If you manipulate whatever you force, whatever you resist, it will create more and more problems. So this has to be arrived at through consistent practice. So if you're someone who is, you know, um, more physically active, you'll find that slowing the breath down will become easier as opposed to someone who has been a very shallow breather their whole lives and you're trying to slow your breath down. It's gonna be difficult. So that's why we have to understand these four components first and fix them before we can jump into this protocol. That's very, very crucial. So number one, I learned this from Sadhguru and this is a quote that he has. He said, if your breath becomes 11 breaths per minute, 
you understand the language of every animal and bird around you. If your breath becomes nine, you understand the very language that the earth is speaking. If your breath becomes seven, you know everything that is worth knowing in existence. That means your body becomes so stable that there is no static, no crackle, it just perceives everything. Even now, the body perceives, otherwise you could not exist. You may not be conscious of it, but your body understands exactly how the earth is spinning, what is happening with the sun, what is happening with everything. As long as you live, your body is adjusting to all that. When your breath becomes more and more stable, the disturbances of life are gone. So right now in your life, if you're noticing that there's times when you feel good, but there's times when you don't feel good, your whole physiology is changing, right? You, when you get stressed, your muscles clench up, you breathe a little more shallow, you, you close up a little bit more. When you're relaxed, you're more at ease and at peace with life. The reason why these disturbances happen in our lives is because we give in, we succumb to those negativities or the one or two thoughts that pop up within us, we give it more meaning than we need to. And this typically happens, I notice this, when things are going well. So for example, my life, when things are going really, really well, I have this program within me subconsciously that, oh, things can't be this great all the time. Something has to go wrong. And I buy into that. And when I buy into that, my breathing becomes more shallow, I become more clenched, and everything just starts to go wrong. I give into that idea. Whereas recently, I've started to train myself to not give in to those ideas and to notice and observe, to step back into the void and observe this. And the only reason I can do that, I can take a step back, is because I have been training myself for the last seven to eight years in this meditation method, in learning how to step back, slow my breathing down, and during moments of high stress, be still. Okay, this is what's missing. People's ability to be still is just completely missing. I myself naturally have a tendency to always want to keep myself busy doing something. I want to run away from whatever it is I'm feeling. It's too uncomfortable to sit still with it. So that is more of a trigger for me to wake up and realize, oh, this urge to escape whatever it is is coming up. And whenever that urge comes up, I know to watch it and observe it instead of running away from it in action. So my previous tendencies used to be to, at the end of the day, uh, to sit down in front of the TV, watch TV with like a big bowl of dessert or whatever it is, like eat myself into oblivion. And I could get away with that because I'm f blessed with good metabolism and like, you know, I can, I can process a lot of calories in a very short period of time. But only now, right, while I'm, while I'm in my late 20s. In the future, it might not be the case. It probably won't be the case. But the other thing too is when I would do that, I would end up feeling like shit the next day, right? So it would affect me and it would still affect me even more because there was something I was suppressing subconsciously that I was running away from that always kept catching up to me. So when I learned to accept different parts of me and just confront them fully, that's when all of these resistances went away and I started to breathe better, breathe deeper and stay with whatever it is that I was feeling. So, and that's why this protocol becomes so important because this protocol was the reason that I was able to grow in consciousness, okay? So, the first part of this is learning to slow the breath down, which leads me to understanding nasal versus mouth breathing. Most people they have some component of mouth breathing. They're not fully nose breathers. And you can see a lot of people struggle with sleeping at night and getting proper quality of sleep because they snore, but they snore because they, they're using their mouths to breathe. And when you do that, it leads to a host of different kinds of health problems, especially in children who grow up being trained to mouth breathe. So it is very, very imperative you learn how to breathe through the nose. There's a technique called mewing by Dr. Mew, who invented this method where you, whereby you rest your tongue at the palate of your mouth, and you keep it that in the, there in that rested position while you breathe when your mouth is closed. If you train yourself like this, what will happen is you will eventually even become more attractive because your jaw will develop better. So for a lot of people whose jaws are more pushed in and they kinda, you know, it kinda gives you like that ugly kinda chicken neck, you know, where, you, where it's all bunched up. That's because jaw development hasn't, hasn't properly happened, and that's because of the phenomenon of mouth breathing. So, when you start to breathe more and more through your nose, you naturally breathe deeper, uh, and also you just, you start to look better, you start to feel healthier, you start to recover from illnesses quickly, you get less sick. A lot of these things naturally happen when you start to breathe properly, and that is why the breath is so darn important, and they don't even teach you this, right? Like, you don't learn this until later on in life. So, this then leads me to the next part, which is learning to breathe through the diaphragm. So, if I'm breathing through the diaphragm, 
And by the way, I noticed this when I started dating my, my girlfriend, my wife now, girlfriend at the time. And one night she was sleeping and I saw her chest heaving up and down. And then my cousin, I had a three-year-old cousin come visit from Bangladesh. And they were coming, uh, they came over to stay with us. And when she was sleeping, I noticed that her stomach was heaving up and down. And when my son, now he sleeps, I noticed his stomach heaves up and down, naturally, right? Naturally, it's not like he's telling himself to do that, but it just naturally happens as a, as a, as a way of life. And naturally we know what to do. We have all this flexibility as babies, right? So um, this heaving up and down of the stomach means you're correctly using your diaphragm to breathe, which means you're breathing deeper. So if you imagine kind of like you're, like you're breathing into your balls, as one of my coaches used to say, you're breathing into your balls. You're breathing into that lower part of your stomach, your abdomen, your lower abs. And then you'll notice that your stomach will move back and forth. Those of you who take singing lessons or you've grown up doing music and, and, and you've, you've sung, you know what I'm talking about. You, if you simply press here, and you, and you try to breathe at first, it'll be uncomfortable. You put one hand on the round of your back, one hand in, in front, you expand your belly, and then you contract your belly. You notice my stomach is coming up, not my chest. So for most people, they breathe like this. Right, their, their chest is heaving up and down. That's a shallow breath. That's going to lead you to a whole host of problems regarding your health and uh, just pent up emotions in general. So there's a, there's a body, mind, body connection happening here. So learning how to properly breathe through your diaphragm is very, very crucial. The final part to this is spinal position. So for most people uh, with a sedentary lifestyle, what's happened to us is we've hunched over into a computer and our backs have become more rounded. What needs to happen is more of a straightening of the spine. The ancient yogis believe the spine is the uh, axis, the, the antenna that receives divine signal. But for most people, the spine has become incredibly damaged because of postural issues, especially by the time you're in your mid to late 30s, you start to notice these issues come up. So an, an, an easy way to correct your posture is simply by you raising your arms up all the way high as you can, put it to your side and put it down. So me standing up like this, see my posture just got corrected. I naturally have a tendency to, to hunch because I'm you know, somewhat of a tall individual. And when I you know, speak to people or look at my phone, everything is pretty much below me. So it's very easy for me to hunch and I'm also on my computer all day long. So it's very, very important that I remind myself, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sitting in a more relaxed, like I'm resting on top of my uh, hip joint, on top of my you know, pelvis bracket. So instead of hunching over and, and like feeling like I'm straining tensing my muscles to lift myself up. And immediately you'll notice a difference in breathing. So if I'm breathing like this, I feel more natural in my breathing and it's not hunched. My breathing isn't contracted. But if I'm breathing like this, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm just like my whole, I'm not using my whole body to breathe. I'm just breathing with my nose or I'm breathing with my belly, right? It's not that your belly just moves back and forth. It's the whole, whole cavity here. You know, the, the whole waistband area, the, all the muscle, the intercostal muscles here, they all expand and contract. So that's why the round of your back also expands. So these are the crucial, the four crucial components to have in mind. The other thing too with the spine is the yogis knew that at the base of your spine, you store up kundalini energy, which then a, a proper spinal column allows that energy to rise up to the highest chakra, the sahasrara or the crown chakra. So... Now, let's get to this five-step protocol to move energy through your system, but more importantly, learn how to step into the void. So step number one, what you're gonna do is set a timer for 20 minutes. So it's important that you set a timer because otherwise you're always gonna be checking to see if it's time, if it's time, if it's been 15 minutes or if it's been 20 minutes. So I would suggest doing 20 minutes, but if you can do as little as 15 minutes, it's completely effective, but no less than 15 minutes if you want full benefit from this. Number two, sit relaxed with a backrest. Okay, now you might be wondering why a backrest, and here's why. If you don't have a backrest, your spine will just hunch because it's very, for most people, we're not trained. Our spinal, our lower back muscles aren't trained to hold ourselves upright like this for too long because our furniture is not designed like that. So most of your, our back isn't trained to handle that kind of strain. So 
Sit with a backrest, it will keep you more relaxed instead of hunching over and, and falling forward. So keep a backrest, a minimal soft backrest. If, it, if you have a couch that's like hard, kind of like a, an office chair like I have here, not those soft cushy ones where you just sink in. Even if you sit on the floor and you have some form of a backrest, not the wall. I don't recommend the wall because it's too upright, 290 degrees. It's not too uh, ergonomic on your spine. So something with a slight incline is preferred. The next step, you want to watch the breath. Okay, let me explain. When you begin your meditation, you close your eyes, you breathe into your stomach, watch the breath through the nostrils. So you keep a focus on the nostrils and the in-breath and the out-breath. You are watching the natural breathing process that's happening without trying to manipulate and change your breath. This is crucial. Do not try to manipulate or change your breath. For the first few minutes, just watch the natural breath. And then you will feel it natural to do a long draw in and a long exhale draw out. A long draw in and a long draw out. Okay, so that's crucial. For the first few minutes, you're going to be coming into this with whatever worries you've had of the day. And it's going to be you entering with your current state of consciousness. And your state of consciousness is going to shift as you do this exercise. Your mind will wander into thoughts, bring them back to the breath. Wander into thoughts, bring them back, back to the breath. So we're coming back to this natural breathing that's happening. Around minute eight, and again, you don't have to look at your clock, you will feel it. Just trust that you will know when to slow down. It will naturally slow down, by the way. Your breath will be slower than it was before when you're completely relaxed and every single muscle in your body is relaxed as you're sitting down. That's when you will notice that your breathing will slow down and your thoughts will slow down as a result. That's because the mind and the breath have a very intricate, subtle connection. The yogis knew this thousands of years ago. So because of this connection, when we slow down our breathing, the thoughts, the erraticness of the thoughts also start to slow down. Okay, cool. Number four, it's gonna be rough at first, then slow, what I just mentioned. And five, this is a tip, do this first thing in the morning or last thing before bed. I personally prefer first thing in the morning as opposed to last thing before bed because sometimes you have dinner too late and you're too full, you don't wanna to be too full. First thing in the morning, you're good. You wake up, you take a tepid cold shower, cool shower, you need to wash off the sleep inertia Okay, this is very crucial because if you s jump in, no shower, you're going to fall asleep. You s you're still in sleep inertia. You're still, you know, you're, you're not out of sleep yet. So go and take a shower, cleanse yourself of sleep inertia, and then sit down, set your timer for 20 minutes and begin doing this. What I want you to do is commit to doing this, these five steps for the next 40 days. And you can create a thread down in the comments saying 40 day accountability for void state meditation. And I want you to come back with your daily recap of what you've noticed happen today after you've done the meditation. And please keep in mind to do this every single day. Okay, that this is crucial. Just like every single day having that kind of a momentum just for 40 days. After that, you can do whatever you want. You can continue it or not. But for any kind of exercise or spiritual work to take place and ingrain itself into a whole being, physiology, it takes a period of around 30 to 40 days. So that's what I recommend. If you want to take this deeper, what's effective is to combine this knowledge of stepping back into the void with reality creation. And the best way to create reality, external reality, is through your internal reality by presenting the right image to the internal mirror. I've made a comprehensive video on the mirror principle, which allows you to do just that. There's four main principles of the mirror. And in this video right here, I'm gonna put it up somewhere here. You can click on it completely free to access. It's right on YouTube. I share with you uh, the complete mirror principle and how to apply it in your life. It's the same principle that took me from working a job burnt out, doing what I hate, every single day to starting my own business, having the freedom and luxury to work four hours a week and make millions of dollars a year and spend more time with my family. All of this was possible because of the internal image I held to be true, but I could only do that if I could step away from my current bullshit, right? If I couldn't step away from my current BS, it's difficult to create a new reality because anything you create from the same state of consciousness will perpetuate that state of consciousness. Okay, so click right here to access that video and I'll see you in this next video right now. Thanks.